Vice President Kamala Harris in her first campaign event as the likely nominee here in West Dallas, just outside of Milwaukee. I'm going to keep running because the winner don't quit on themselves. Extraordinary story and leadership. Thank you. And I do believe our teachers do God's work. They teach other people's children, and God knows we don't pay them enough. Let's thank them. And it is so good to be here and be back with so many extraordinary leaders, including my friend, the great governor of Wisconsin, Tony Evers. He's here somewhere. My dear friend, Senator Tammy Baldwin. And you know, I had the privilege of serving with Tammy when I was in the United States Senate, and she is always fighting for the people of this state. And I know that the folks that are here are going to make sure you return her to Washington, D.C. Yes, we are going to elect her back to Washington, D.C. It is so good to be here also with Lieutenant Governor Sarah Rodriguez, <laughs> Attorney General Josh Call, Wisconsin Secretary of State Sarah Godlewski, <laughs> County Executive David, David Crowley, <laughs> Mayor Cavalier Johnson, Great State Party Chair Ben Wickler, who I have worked with. Ben, you and I have been working together for years, and I can attest he knows how to build the infrastructure that delivers wins up and down the ballot. Thank you, Ben. So it is good to be back in Wisconsin, and it is great to be in Milwaukee. As many of you know, our state campaign headquarters are in this city, yes, and that, there is a reason for that. The path to the White House goes through Wisconsin. Yes, it does. And to win in Wisconsin, we are counting on you right here in Milwaukee. And you all helped us win in 2020. And in 2024, we will win again. Yes, we will. So, Milwaukee, I want to start by saying a few words, and I could really speak at length, but a few words about our incredible President Joe Biden. It has truly been one of the greatest honors of my life to serve as Vice President to our President Joe Biden. Joe's legacy of accomplishment over his entire career and over the past three and a half years is unmatched in modern history. In one term, think about it, in one term as president, he has already surpassed the legacy of most presidents who served two terms in office. <laughs> and
And I know we are all deeply, deeply grateful for his continuing service to our nation. And it is my great honor to have Joe Biden's endorsement in this race. So, Wisconsin, I am told as of this morning that we have earned the support of enough delegates to secure the Democratic nomination. And I am so very honored, and I pledge to you, I will spend the coming weeks continuing to unite our party so that we are ready to win in November. So friends, we have 105 days until Election Day. And in that time, we've got some work to do. But we're not afraid of hard work. We like hard work, don't we? And we will win this election. Yes, we will. So as Leah told you, before I was elected vice president, before I was elected United States senator, I was elected attorney general of the state of California, and I was a courtroom prosecutor before then. And in those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. Predators who abused women, fraudsters who ripped off consumers, cheaters who broke the rules for their own gain. So hear me when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. you, I will proudly put my record against his any day of the week. As Attorney General of California, I took on one of our country's largest for-profit colleges that was scamming students. Donald Trump ran a for-profit college that scammed students. As a prosecutor, I specialized in cases involving sexual abuse. Well, Trump was found liable for committing sexual abuse. As Attorney General of California, I took on the big Wall Street banks and held them accountable for fraud. Donald Trump was just found guilty of fraud on 34 counts. But let's also make no mistake, this campaign is not just about us versus Donald Trump. This campaign is about who we fight for. This is about who we fight for. Just look at how we are running our campaigns. So Donald Trump is relying on support from billionaires and big corporations. And he is trading access in exchange for campaign contributions. A couple months ago, you all saw that a couple months ago at Mar-a-Lago, he literally promised big oil companies, big oil lobbyists, he would do their bidding for $1 billion in campaign donations. On the other hand, we, are running a people-powered campaign. And we 
just had some breaking news. We just had the best 24 hours. of grassroots fundraising in presidential campaign history. All right. And because we are a people-powered campaign, that is how you know we will be a people-first presidency. And Wisconsin, this campaign is also about two different visions for our nation. One, where we are focused on the future. The other, focused on the past. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity not just to get by, but to get ahead. future where no child has to grow up in poverty, where every worker has the freedom to join a union, where every person has affordable health care, affordable child care, and paid family leave. We believe in a future where every senior can retire with dignity. So all of this is to say building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. Because here's the thing we all here, Wisconsin, know. When our middle class is strong, America is strong. But Donald Trump wants to take our country backward. He and his extreme Project 2025 agenda will weaken the middle class. Like, we know we got to take this seriously. And can you believe they put that thing in writing? <laughs> Read it. It's 900 pages. But here's the thing. You, when you read it, you will see Donald Trump intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. <laughs> he intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations and make working families foot the bill. <laughs> They intend to end the Affordable Care Act <laughs> and take us back then to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. <laughs> Remember what that was like? Children with asthma? Women who survived breast cancer? Grandparents with diabetes? America has tried these failed economic policies before, but we are not going back. We are not going back. Not going back. We're not going back. We are not going back. back because ours is a fight for the future and it is a fight for freedom generations of America's generations and we have to remember this the shoulders on which we stand generations of Americans before us led the fight for freedom. And now, Wisconsin, the baton is in our hands. We, who believe in the sacred freedom to vote, will make sure every American has the ability to cast their ballot and have it counted. 
We who believe that every person in our nation should, who should have the freedom to live safe from the terror of gun violence. Yeah. We'll finally pass red flag laws, universal background checks, and an assault weapons ban. who believe in reproductive freedom will stop Donald Trump's extreme abortion bans because we trust women to make decisions about their own body and not have their government tell them what to do. When Congress passes a law to restore reproductive freedoms as President of the United States, I will sign it into law. So Wisconsin, ultimately in this election, we each face a question. What kind of country do we want to live in? A country... <laughs> To your point, do we want to live in a country of freedom, yeah. compassion, and rule of law, or a country of chaos, fear, and hate? <laughs> and here's the beauty of this moment. We each have the power to answer that question. The power is with the people. We each have the power to answer that question. And in the next 105 days, then we have work to do. We have doors to knock on. We have phone calls to make. We have voters to register. And we have an election to win. So Wisconsin, today I ask you, are you ready to get to work? Do we believe in the promise of America? And are we ready to fight for it? And when we fight, we win. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Vice President Kamala Harris walking down the steps here at this event in West Dallas, Wisconsin. This is just outside of Milwaukee in her first campaign event as the likely Democratic nominee and her first since President Biden stepped out of the race. Today, she said uh, a couple of uh, key phrases that appear to uh, drive the crowd. She said, when we fight, we win. She also said, not going back. She did bring up some of former President Trump's legal woes and made the connection with her experience as a former prosecutor. She brought up his fraud case out of New York, his uh, civil case um, involving sexual assault. She also brought up Project 2025, encouraging people to read the 900 pages. That elicited the chant of not going back. And she talked about some of the platforms that the Democratic Party will be running on, including gun violence and an assault weapons ban, reproductive freedom. She mentioned other programs like child tax credits. And I want to go ahead now to CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Jiang, who joins us from that event in West Dallas, Wisconsin. So Weijia, interesting that today Harris said, I know Donald Trump's type.
Lindsay, I think we'll be hearing a lot of that on the campaign trail for Vice President Harris. We'll also be hearing a lot of this song you hear behind me. It is Beyonce's Freedom. The pop star actually gave Harris permission to use it, and it is clearly going to be the song of her campaign because it represents all of the things that she has been talking about with regard to freedom, with regard to the fact that, you know, she says, uh, American rights are at stake here. So when she talks about Donald Trump in this way, you know, she means also in a personal way. Um, you know, these two have had history before. We saw the, the former president already attacking her in a way that many uh, people are calling a sexist. And she has called him racist during an interview with CBS News before. And so she is pointing to the fact, according to sources, that, you know, if you're a woman of color especially, it could be somebody who gets under the skin of Donald Trump. She's also laying out the case that she is a former prosecutor, a district attorney of San Francisco, and she brought that up here during this rally that she is now going head to head with a convicted felon. And so there's plenty to draw from there, Lindsay. And this was a very energized, electric event. In fact, campaign officials tell us that due to the excitement and due to the interest, they actually had to last minute change the venue so they could accommodate more people. And they say that there are about 3,000 people in the crowd today. And I can just tell you anecdotally that it felt very different from uh, the last uh, Joe Biden rally I was at hmm. because of this fresh energy in the air and in talking to voters. They all said, you know, they feel like this is a brand new campaign, that they're able to reset after three very, very terrible weeks for the Biden campaign. Now, you know, this certainly feels very different, Lindsay. And our campaign reporter for CBS News, Nadia Cavazos, did write um, that the energy was palpable. This is by far her largest event in 2024, that audience diverse in ethnicities and ages, and also something, Rija, that's sort of catching the zeitgeist, and that is... Kamala Harris is brat, um, that many people are sort of wearing that green chartreuse color. Can you sort of explain yes. to us the attitude and aesthetic that is brat? I will do my best, Lindsay. I'm an elder millennial, so I'm not exactly Gen Z, but I've done my research about this. And, uh, you know, the voters here who I asked about it said, it's a vibe. It is a spirit that you can encompass that really addresses the feminine spirit, the feralness of women using their voices, um, and of being unapologetically yourself. And so we know this came from a pop star who uh, tweeted, Kamala is brat. And that is a compliment for anybody who might have questions. And again, it's really about, you know, owning who you are and uh, being able to roll with that, even if sometimes it means laughing at yourself, being a little bit self-deprecating, being a little bit fun. I heard from one voter who said, of course they want the president of the United States to be steeped in foreign policy, domestic issues that are going to impact their everyday lives. But this voter said it was refreshing to have somebody on the ticket who understands memes, who understands TikToks, who understands that leaning in is actually a very powerful tool to connect with the critical young vote that Biden was struggling with for so long. She also touted a fundraising record. What did she have to say about that? So we know that from the moment that Biden stepped out of the race to yesterday evening, that she and her Democratic groups that are backing her raising money have raised more than $100 million, which is a record for a presidential campaign just starting out. And so, you know, money talks a lot. So do big time endorsements. And we know that, you know, just before she came out here, Senator Chuck Schumer, um, uh, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, the two top Democrats in Congress formally endorsed her. So she has plenty of momentum going her way. It's not just money, it's volunteers too. The campaign tells us that 58,000 new people have signed up 
to help with the campaign, which is more than 100 times their daily average. And Rita, there may be um, a lot of momentum, but she has a lot of ground to cover. I mean, we keep saying 105 days. Um, and, and yes, she does have the war chest, and it's not like her campaign is starting from zero. She has those boots on the ground. But these events are what she is going to need to do to essentially reintroduce herself to the American people. We've heard from a lot of voters who say over the last several years they haven't heard a ton from her. Right, and she has been on the trail, I would say, especially in the past six months, pretty aggressively. And she is going to Indianapolis tomorrow. She's scheduled to go to Massachusetts later in the week. So she was already juggling a very robust uh, campaign schedule. Of course, she's also vice president of the United States. So it is a balancing act. But we fully expect her to be out every opportunity that she can to, as you mentioned, connect with as many people as possible, because this is a very different role for her. And, you know, running for vice president is one thing. Running for president is a complete other, which is why those resources are so critical in making sure people know her story and making sure people know her strengths and what she believes uh, she has accomplished in the administration. So she's not only running on her personal record, she actually does have a record to run on, too, uh, from her time in the Senate and as vice president. And that is the benefit uh, that, you know, she brings to the ticket is that she's able to say, I did all of these things with Joe Biden, who you guys were previously backing. And so I think the big question, as it has always been, Lindsay, is how can she resonate with people in those critical battleground states that might be undecided. Uh, so that's why she's here in Wisconsin, which is, of course, one of the uh, greatest uh, battleground states, swing states, up for grabs. And so we'll be seeing a lot of that. But to your point, yes, it is. Even though it's 105 days, it's going to be a long slog. And we look forward to following her around for it. Yeah, you mentioned how close Wisconsin was, less than a percentage point with Biden taking that state in 2020. Weija Jang, thank you so much.